for you. Oh my god, you're recording all our secrets. No, I'm not. Joe! There's no secrets over here. <laughs> um, if you're gonna come in, mess up all my stuff. I'm, I'll turn it back on. I would mess, just... mess up our conversation, our secrets. You're messing up our secrets here. I, I listen, I'm just here shooting some B-roll. You guys didn't have to get all distracted. I, you know, I understand why you'd be distracted. You got a, a very There's handsome one. lad oh. sitting behind you with with a beautiful camera. Nice. <laughs> Maybe it's a beautiful lad with a handsome camera. That I think listen, that's more plausible. I'm okay with either of those. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway. Also, m more like D-roll. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. All right. The UPS guy is here. I think our shirts have arrived. Damn wheel. Stickers. Wow. Look how nice they're all packaged and stuff. They are different colors. They like to make Everyone's wearing their shirts there. Hold well, on. you know, we got the uniform today. I hope this is in focus, but I highly oh. doubt it. Hold on. There we go. That's probably better. Uh, that's I, I, nice. I, I... Okay. Hey. Hey, sir. Uh, hello, Joe. I'm sitting here working on a new power system for Astroneer. Yes, I heard, which is why I'm bothering you right now about this. Thank you. <laughs> uh, why are we doing a new power system? Uh, there are a couple reasons. Um, one of the most immediate ones is that with the modularity system, we don't quite have base platforms working the same way that they used to. So we needed a new way to hook things up to power. And this is an opportunity for us to also revisit how we were dealing with power as part of like the gameplay and building and whatnot um, with an eye forward to some future elements we'd like to introduce like an automation system and yeah. such so we're also trying to give a little bit of logistical depth right to the uh, power gameplay so you might have um, a really nice hilltop that gets great wind or something, and so you build a bunch of wind generators up there and you need to get the power down to your base that's like in, in a valley or something. So right now you don't have many options for doing that. No. Uh, and it's really cumbersome to try to transfer power long distance like that. So we want to, we're going to, with this we're adding this layer of, you know, kind of flexible uh, power infrastructure where yeah. you, you will have components that can transfer power long distances and be a lot easier to build and manage and, and deal with. Right. Yeah. Um, and again, awesome. yeah, I, I hope so. Um, <laughs> this, this is a prototype in a very real sense of the word. Um, Aaron and I worked a lot on this from the design perspective, but it's all just been on paper. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've got to validate this in code and right. in the game and make sure that it's actually fun to play. It sounds good to us, but Game development is weird. A lot of ideas that sound good, when you actually play them, they don't quite turn out like you expected. A lot of people see the original version of the game that was like put out in Unity a while back, mm -hmm. and they see those cables, and they see the modules that are separated out, mm -hmm. and they want that. They want to be able to like put the cables where they want, and they want to make decisions how they want to, and that's sort of sort of like where the direction it's going in. Oh, no, that's totally the direction that it's, it's going. It won't look identical to how like we we fired up an old build of the game to to look uh, just a couple of days ago to look at um, how they were doing power uh, and whatnot because I had never played that yeah. old version, <laughs> um, and it was cool to look to to look at. It won't be identical to that, but it will be kind of similar. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you you hit on a, a an important consequence of that is setting separating out your base layout from your power grid. Like they're kind of one and the same right now, right. and now they'll be totally separate. And so you'll be able to have power lines. You can, you can build like a power generation station far away from, you know, like other, like your smelter or whatnot. So right. processing or manufacturing and have power that, have power lines that run right. between. All right, well, thanks. No I will problem. let you get back to it. Please do. I got a lot of work, but um, I'm really glad to get a chance to tell people about this. Yes. Hopefully it'll be good. I got a package. Let's go open it. Oh, 
Okay. I know what this is, but you sure don't. And it's a great way, it's a segue into what I need to talk about today. Okay, nice. There they are. Uh, I ordered these. They came out really nice. Thanks, Sticker Mule. Uh, they didn't sponsor this. Just, they did a nice job. We ordered some pins, slash buttons, whatever you want to call them, uh, this week because PAX is this week. Um, we don't have an official presence at PAX. Uh, we, we honestly thought it would be better just to keep working on the game than actually go. Uh, just didn't seem like a good use of our time right now. Um, but some of us will be there. It is in our hometown of Seattle, so we didn't have to travel very far. Um, we have actually a pretty decent amount of things that are happening with team members this week. So let me go through those. I also put a link in the description below if you want to catch up and get the links and sign up for stuff. Uh, it's all there. There's um, the ID at Xbox showcase on Thursday, which actually takes place on their campus in Redmond. Um, I'll put details down below. It's a free events where you can come and play a bunch of games. There's also some really great games that are going to be there. Um, Player Unknown Battlegrounds on Xbox One. Cuphead's going to be there, which is really exciting. So we're going to have a few members of the team hanging out. You can play some Astroneer on the um, Xbox One X at 4K, which is pretty fun, and we'll have the buttons. Then on Friday, Samantha's going to be on a panel with a, a couple of other people talking about their personal history of video games and how that history has shape them, which is going to be really cool. Then on Saturday, Brendan will be giving, will be on a panel hosted by the Museum of Flight, and there's, it, they're actually mixing together real life space companies with some people who have made space related video games and like how those things play together. So uh, once again, full description, the uh, full details in the description if you want to attend that. Brendan's going to be on that panel with a bunch of really cool, um, people. I'm so excited for that talk. Then Samantha is going to be on um the pax rumble which is this um group of journalists and game devs who play old school um wrestling games against each other it's almost like a royal rumble of game de developers and journalists um and samantha is actually the champion from 2015 uh so she'll be competing in that on sunday once again full details down below but um that's, that's basically our presence at PAX. We're not gonna be playable on the floor or anything like that. Everyone's working on the game really hard right now. It didn't seem like a good idea to spend a lot of time at PAX. Follow us on Twitter. If you find, if you go to one of those panels or if you go to uh, the ID at Xbox um, open house, we'll have these. You can have one full free. If you wanna meet up with us, please hit me up and I would, I would love to do that. I'll be roaming around the show floor almost every day. Um, taking care of some business, but also just trying to meet as many people as possible. So yeah, that's PAX. I'm really excited. Uh, hit me up on Twitter if you want some of these. Cool. Oh my gosh. It's our new ice planet. I was going to say, is this the new planet that you guys have been working on? There's my rover. <laughs> Doesn't, nope. Nope. Oops. Oh, there you go. Okay. What is Everything's happening? Good. Yeah, we're all good. We're all good. 